Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Polycore Defense. It is a tower defense game with uh, extra progression systems to make things more interesting. Just play on normal. And vulnerability and go from here. Okay. I'm getting some very strong balloons vibes from this already. O open arsenal. Selecting turrets. So we've got minigun, proton sniper, laser beamer. Locks on and beams an enemy down with a laser. 4 damage every 0.3 seconds. 12 damage per bullet every 0.3... Uh, 0.13 seconds and locks on and shoots a proton particle energy at enemies from afar, high damage and low fire rate. 100 damage every uh, 1.4 seconds. Okay, well I have only so much money. Oh, this is this is big balloons energy right now. Okay. And you know what? I should probably I should probably get some things here. Uh, can I upgrade this by the way? Oh, oh boy what is this? High caliber, increases bullet damage, overclock, fire rate, thermal sensor, target cloaked enemies, aerial targeting, critical strike, range extender. Uh, what about you? Melting heat, slows enemies, hit. I wonder if I can actually sell this. No. Uh, so you can't sell it for full speed, but that's okay. Shooting the beam of the same enemy will cause an explosion. The laser damage increases the longer the beam stay, stays on the same target, up to 9 damage. And then some other stuff. Uh, can I get both of them? Looks like it. I'll have a target cloaked enemies too, just in case. Okay, G for abilities, starting a wave. Get us started. And fast forward, leveling up. Gain EXP and levels by destroying enemies, unlock turrets, perks, and abilities by leveling up. Defend your core. Alright, yep. Big Bluden's energy in the best possible way. Holy snap, these sound effects need to go. That's a bit better. Okay, so how fast can we go? Eh, reasonably fast. Yeah, let's just give this boy a bunch of damage. I appreciate that you can upgrade each and every one of these. That's nice. This should not not be playing, by the way. Cause yeah, this this has lyrics and it should not. Okay, new modified enemy coming hasty moves much faster. All right, I've got 125. I think I'm gonna just overclock this sucker and go from there. Tower defense games are so depressing. It's one of my favorite genres, but almost all of them are pretty bland or even bad. Yeah, it's one of those that the genre hasn't really figured out how to modernize well. Yeah, I'm just going to turn the sound effects just straight off. I don't dis, I don't hate them, but they're just going to be super repetitive, especially on uh, higher speeds. Okay. Do we keep doing this one? Armor piercing does even more damage. Cloaked enemies, range extensor, uh, extender. Hmm. Well, we haven't been warned about flyers. Oh, and it looks like this does actually have an upper limit. So after a certain point, it's not going to be able to get more. Well, that's fine. Oh. I was wondering why my music just was out of commission. Okay, so it looks like I can't do too much more. Uh, plated. Reduces incoming damage by 50%, bypassed by certain turrets and modules. Well, I don't have enough money for anything else, so I could potentially... Let's just give it the, uh, the crit strike. That's actually pretty solid. There we go. Okay. What's the thermal beam going to do? I think it's fine. I think at this point we probably want to save up for some more uh, for some more towers. Something new. Uh, let's see. Healing. Enemies heal back over time. Fine. Would I want a proton sniper? Actually, probably. Something that takes out the really big tanky suckers.
Okay. Where do I put it? Here? I'll put it here. Okay, so you're gonna... Uh, let's see. Slow immune. That's fine. First, last, closest, farthest, most health. Particle collider. Chance of dealing crit and stunning. Heal nullifier. Ooh. Prevents enemies from splitting. These are interesting. I guess if they're sending healers at me... I should probably go with that. And then maybe the splitters. There we go. Then honestly, I should probably maybe get this thing the explosive beam. Maybe? I'm not sure how much that actually would even help. Infinity range. Ooh! I appreciate the fact that I can upgrade that. Uh, let's see. Stun immune. Don't care too much. This tree, in retrospect, is kind of a, uh... Eh, no, it's actually not, a, not an issue. I thought it would be, but they're just going above the, uh... The sight line. Or just going into the sight line. Uh, let's see, I hear Bloons TD is a good game, but since it has cartoon monkeys instead of kicking rad robots and lasers, I didn't try it. I would recommend it all the same. Uh, like... I, I I stayed away from it from the for the exact same reason. Um and frankly, I wish I hadn't. Cause like Bloons is a is a fantastic tower defense game. Probably one of the absolute best on the market, if not the best. Which is a little hard to say because like I love Orcs Must Die and I love Um I love Orcs Must Die and I love Sanctum, but there's just something about Bloons that makes it so much more interesting on a tactical level. I think it's because both Sanctum and Orcs Must Die, I think, put too much requirement on the player to shoot. Um, in a lot of cases, maybe. Oh, and Exmorph really doesn't get enough love. I liked Exmorph. I thought that was a neat game. Okay, do we get another something? I'm going to put a laser beamer here. Okay, where's the most modifiers? Is there nothing about fastest? I'm gonna have this guy focus specifically on the last thing and see if I can give it some uh, to slow things down. There we go. Yeah, balloons at high level is really tricky. It is hard. Like, there are not a whole lot of games on a tactical level that stump me forever. You know, I can usually figure stuff out pretty quickly. Balloons on, like, the highest levels, I straight up cannot complete half of them without spending, like, an hour plus on them. And that is something that shocks me every time. Holy smokes, we're only on wave... Uh, 12 out of 40. This is going to take some doing. New turret will unlock at level 1. Oof. Alright. Maybe we get more when we lose. Because I'm getting, I'm getting some EXP, but uh, this definitely feels like I need to go until I, uh, until I die. I will say on the whole, like, you know, cool robots and things, I really like the turret designs. I do not like the environment in this. I wish they had gone for, like, a really stark mechanical, like, sci-fi look to everything. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. And yeah, maybe it's just the first map. Maybe. I'm trying to think there is Oh, what is the what is the tower defense game? There's one that I did a video on, but I never actually um put up. Uh the White Laboratory. I don't know if it's necessarily like a good model for how to have a really minimalistic but cool looking aesthetic. But that game is freaking gorgeous for what it is.
Okay, cloak. Oh. Uh thermal sensor. I think a number of these have thermal sensors. Well, let's guarantee that we do. You can figure out Bloon's tower defense by playing it. You don't need a guide at all. For the hardest difficulties, for like chimps mode, was it? You need a guide. You could figure that out, but that's going to take forever. And like, unless you're spending hours and hours and hours on that kind of thing. I just can't imagine most people are going to be able to, to just figure it out without spending a month trying to do so. Probably get this one melting heat. Okay. Uh, do we? Yeah, we'll do it. Then after this, I might actually just start investing hard into snipers, frankly. Like, maybe some lasers here, but the snipers, especially if I had, like, a layer of them up here, should probably be able to just snipe anything on the map. Whereas the rest of these are only good at doing damage, you know, when the enemies are nearby. But yeah, as long as you're not playing balloons on the absolute maximum difficulty levels, you can just get through it fine and figure it out no problem. But, like, if you want to do the hard stuff, oh, be prepared. That is... That is a grueling experience. Let's put him down here. Okay. We'll just get the infinity range on my snipers. Infinity range and particle collider. I don't think we really need the heal nullifier or the other stuff growing. Makes enemies keep growing into more powerful enemy. I mean, I don't know if there's much I can do with that one. Let's have this focus on most health. Let's see, because I think anything with most health probably is going to be the one with the splitting and the healing. So if I can turn that off, that'll prevent most things. I do appreciate that, though. I don't remember if you can actually do that in balloons. Like, turn off splitting entirely. I know I think there's some anti-healing ones, but I don't remember if there's anti-splitting. I know there's, there's, like, the glue that pierces through splits and will, like, pass it on. Okay, we've leveled up. Hell yeah. Get another sniper. Ooh, we get a new turret available. Shockwave generator. Uh, generates a shockwave blast, damaging all enemies cost, caught in the shockwave. Missiles and enemies, creating a small explosion on the impact, damaging enemies. 45 damage per missile. Or shock pulsar. Chains to nearby enemies in range. So the question is, do we want lightning or do we want a shockwave? I like lightning. Also, thank you, Killer B the Eight. The Eight. You know, I don't know. Thank you, Killer B, for the what is that? Twenty month resub. Okay, multiplies the enemy's health, increasing health by a lot. All right. Let's see. Well, I think we're doing reasonably well. This really is just super bloonsy. Which is mostly fine. Okay, I'm gonna... Ooh, shock pulsers do not have much for range. Lightning chain spark evoker. Shocking the same enemy additional times, not counting chain shocked enemies, creates a spark. Shocking five enemies in a single pulse. Okay, in retrospect, I'm actually going to sell this one. We're going to move it over here. It benefits most from density more than anything else. And we're only going to get that like, here-ish. Eh. Put that there. Okay. 
And I could give this the range upgrades, but I think I'm going to work on the, the zapper. Okay. Chain to additional enemies. Range extender. There we go. I think that's the trick. And then we can also get a dazing shock if we want to. I do like the lightning. I think that that'll be good. I'll definitely have to get it on different maps than this one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I recently saw an ad for a mobile game called M Mega Tower that's straight up either taking the design of or using clips from the tower game you played. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that. It's not always illegal, but often, uh, often these games uh, tend to actually just straight up steal stuff and just hope they can get by. I I cannot tell, you know, if it's one way or another. Either way, it doesn't surprise, but it is kind of depressing. It, mobile games are one of those where, like, they could have actually been a really cool industry, but they, uh, more or less lack of curation and rules meant, uh, I guess lack of curation and rules more or less meant that they could, uh, you know, the, the worst games rose to prominence and the best games kind of fell to obscurity. Not necessarily, but it just feels awful. I see stolen footage in mobile game ads all the time, like straight up clips from Modern Warfare 2. And like, it just, I don't know, it always feels gross to me. But it's one of those that the, I think a lot of the target audience for these mobile games are either people that don't care or just don't know better. And they just kind of get away with it because there isn't a whole lot of uh you know there's almost no oversight from Apple nor Google on these on these issues and then um and then even beyond that like there's so many that you have to hunt through and it's not like you can well it's not like these uh these services these platforms actually have any kind of way for you to uh so like, for you to track, like, hey, my footage got stolen and was put into this game. So, one thing that YouTube does incredibly well that I like is uh, it has content ID, which, like, okay. I know a lot of people get mad about it, uh, and it does have its its issues that, you know, I've, I've had. I mean, even this game is a good example of it. Uh, it's got uh, content ID matching for the soundtrack, so I actually had to turn the music off. And I'm just listening to my own music instead, uh, which is fine. You know, I, I pay for a pretzel, pretzel Rock subscription, so I specifically can have copyright free music to listen to. Um, yeah, content ID isn't perfect, but they haven't found a better solution, though. Yeah, I, I think the real answer is just that it's the dispute system needs to be much more curated. You know, hey, this big channel just got a copyright violation from, you know, this this random person. You know, can we verify that they own it? No? Uh, hmm. And, you know, kind of that level of oversight of, like, maybe these people don't, uh, don't have claim to the thing that they're claiming. Uh, and then I think recently they also reduced the time period, uh, of, like, a, a video being claimed. Because I think it used to be, uh, it used to be like a full month and now it's like 15 days or something, which actually is better. Because uh, what would happen is a lot of these companies would just sit for a, a whole month and then just do nothing about it. Uh, I think the other thing is just also uh, YouTube and Google need to be way better about punishing uh, bad actors. But, uh, so for their mobile games, there is no way to do content ID on mobile games. So if a bad actor wants to wholesale steal unpacking the only way that that's going to get found is if people notice and report it themselves and what would work i mean maybe unpacking uh the unpacking clone doesn't quite count but they like straight up traced over assets and some other things so i think you could i think you could kind of get that um 
you could get that tracked. But like, yeah, stealing clips from like Call of Duty, like honestly, I think that's a a that that kind of even even small amount of copyright offense should be a bannable offense on most of these storefronts and get you the big boot. Well, I think I've found the solution here. I guess stealth enemies are a bit of an issue. So is the problem mobile games or ads for and in mobile games? I'd say both. Because a lot of mobile games will straight up just steal stuff as well. Uh, freely and without a care in the world. Because there's not enough oversight from Google and Apple to actually prevent it from happening. Nor enough posi- um... Let's see, nor enough punishments for bad actors. Because if a if a studio, eat, like, acts out and gets banned, they just make a new studio and then continue on doing whatever the hell they were doing. And many, so many of them just sneak by under the radar because, hey, you know, nobody's really watching it because it's... The internet is too big to be managed by these companies without using, like, extensive, extensive AI-ish. And we need an IP ban. Honestly, maybe. I don't know. I, I think it's just uh, Web 2.0 was very afraid of moderation. And I think that was a mistake. You know, being afraid of alienating your, you know, parts of your customer base. Or or whatever, just, just in case, you know. But we, we can't lose anybody. Everybody has to be included because, you know, otherwise we won't make as much profit. And it's like... Yeah, but then all those bad actors run the platform or something. I don't know. I, I think about this with uh, Destiny because they, they tend to be... I think Destiny and Final Fantasy tend to be some of the most ardent... Uh, uh, do you want to do heal nullifiers on a couple of these? Let's see. I just want to have these kind of on random, slightly random targets so they're not all shooting the same guy. And did we not get another tower? Ah, new tower at level 3. Cripes, you gotta grind for a while. And the problem is they're not too concerned with bad actors provided they're power, uh, profitable. And bad actors drive engagement and some other things and I don't know. Yeah. Practical issue is that manual moderation doesn't scale and there's still a lot of issues to solve with auto moderation. Yep. But at the same time, I run a channel with 400,000 subscribers and a Twitch channel with, you know, 57,000 subscribers and, you know, apparently 450 viewers at the moment. And it's like, it's all, it's all like very light auto moderation, you know, just checking for certain words and phrases uh, that, you know, I do not want people to be using. And then, uh, otherwise, just, you know, relative vi vigilance, both, you know, on, on my part, and then also from my moderation teams. And it works. It actually works out quite well. You may want more stealth detection. Maybe. I don't think it's the stealth detection that's going to, uh, change things here. I think I'm just super boned, because these things are tanky as shit. Holy smokes. Ah! <laughs> but yeah, my channel is a great example of a well-moderated community. I think part of it is we survived. Um, I think the biggest thing often boils down to... Uh, you have to... You have to be constantly vigilant about it. And... Uh, relatively unyielding-ish. I sleeping on the minigun. I mean, the snipers were working great for a while. I think just the answer is uh, I'm getting outscaled and I need need to be able to spend my perk points that I've accrued. Yeah, I'll, I'll get another minigun. 
throw it in here. So I don't I don't think we're gonna make it. I think uh too many of these guys are smacking me around. And that's fine too. No, we got it. Okay. As moderators aren't even needed in a lot of situations, the community here will shoot down most bad actors without us. And it's also one of those that I'm willing to step into. I know a lot of streamers just straight up... I, I, I think part of it is a lot of streamers and YouTubers just put up with it and just disengage from their community instead. I remember a long time ago, somebody was telling me that I need to be more that more like um, uh, certain other big YouTubers because they just let their audience run wild and that somehow creates a better community. And more or less, the real answer there is that it doesn't actually have them create a better community. It has them create a better community for bad actors who want to be terrible. Okay, so we also get some extra EXP, I think. Well, let's go see about our perk points. Okay, so barrier, nah. Next level, EXP gain is good. All gem miners, gem miners, starts with a steel drill installed. Enemies have a 5% chance of doing zero to the core or chance at it, hmm. I'm curious about the gem mine, miners, but I think we're gonna go for the next level because we don't have gem miners yet. Okay, so what else do we have? Anything? Where's a gem miner? Gem miner. It's locked. Hmm. Yep. Nope. Just gives me money. All right, cool. Can I go to polygonal? Okay, nope. Complete a map on any difficulty. Oof. Well, I could also play on an easier difficulty to get access to the next one if I want to go quick. The real experience. Let's try easy. Let's go quick. Just jam guns down. My favorite thing is when streamers ban subs because they think money means permission to misbehave. I, for the longest time, I don't want to say that like I was kind of in that camp, but it was legitimately difficult for me to uh, to ban long-term fans uh, or supporters or um, I mean even moderators. You know, I've 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 had to ban two moderators at this point, which uh, mostly it speaks to I was not being uh, nearly as selective about the people that I was choosing as mods. I really wish there's another level of speed, but that's okay. What do we invest in? Honestly, what is the link? I have no idea what the link means. There is always cheat engine for more speed. This is true. But yeah, it's an easy mindset to be in. These people are helping in big parts of things you don't want to lose them, but uh, you can't ha leave that. Yep. Yeah. No, I don't know. I. <laughs> it's tough. It's it's really is like a lot of a lot of people get kind of suckered into sunk cost fallacy or. Hoping people will just behave after a certain point, but it is much better to just have a heavy hand and say, nope, this community needs to have this level of, like, you know, cleanness and support and wholesomeness. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it just ends up turning into kind of murky bad. And, I don't know, a bad community. Usually, <laughs> there's a, uh, a story that I, I think I reiterate too much, but I'll repeat it anyway. Um, dude's at a bar and, you know, he's just sitting at the bar and the bartender is just a grumpy, grumpy fellow. More or less doesn't talk, doesn't interact with people. But, uh, somebody comes in wearing, you know, just like a punk jacket or something like that. But some of the patches are a little weird looking. Um, but the guy at the bar, you know, doesn't think any of, anything of it until the bartender kicks him out. Why'd you kick him out? Well, the guy's actually, you know, secretly... Uh, like, 
a skinhead, a white supremacist, uh, or a Nazi. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. And if I don't kick him up, uh, kick him out here and now, he'll bring his friends next time. And then they'll keep bringing their friends until this whole place is just filled with only these people. And then by the end of it, that's the only people you have in your bar. Uh, and that stuck with me. I, I think that was the the point where it like finally clicked that like, hey, moderation is actually like really key. Oh, the song's overpowering my words a little bit. All right, I can turn it down. Unfortunately, I hear things differently with my headphones. Oh, and of course they're turned down for some reason. I think it's because I was playing Destiny yesterday and it was being loud for whatever reason. But yeah, it's the tolerance paradox. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't learn that lesson. I think to some degree, uh, the systems that, uh, at least in the US, there's kind of a feeling of like, you kind of don't want people to learn about it because it turns out that the tolerance paradox is a great way to get people to accept bad actors for far, far too long. Um, and there is kind of a vested interest in from or for bad actors to uh, to convince people that bad actors need to be tolerated and even uh, you know communicated with and treated as equals and it's just like nope but so you know I, I don't think I really learned that tolerating ill actions just begets more ill actions uh, until I was gosh in my mid 20s like beforehand it was just kind of like yeah I'll just grin and put up with it the good times are better than the uh the bad oh I should have probably used my um invulnerability perks on the last one when I was going to take a lot of damage whatever it doesn't matter that much but yeah if bad acting isn't shut down it's accepted as normal actions yup and so I think for a lot of people especially from like a twitch perspective uh, you very quickly uh, will kind of sink your own audience, and you know a lot of a lot of streamers will actually just tr straight up support that kind of thing. Um, and and even like kind of egg it on, and it quickly like builds the reputation that a lot of streamers are just kind of awful people. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I had to stop reading D&D horror stories because 90% of them are about people tolerating abusive people until it hits an extreme point purely because they want to play d d It's depressing to read. Yup. Oh, this tree absolutely does block? What? That's awful. Let's see. Do I want to put this here? Yeah. See, I just wanted to... I just want this to hit one target and only one target. Like pick a target and kill it. But yeah, no D&D is better than bad D&D. Yep. I, I remember with my previous D&D group, uh, one of the guys didn't want to play D&D initially because the the first time he'd ever played D&D, uh, one of the players wanted to be in a porn campaign. And the DM just rolled with it because the DM wanted to play D&D &D no matter what. And uh, that kind of thing is incredibly gross and really weird. And it ruined his, his perception of what D&D &D was like. Uh, because he legitimately thought like, well, you can do anything. So of course this is going to keep happening. And I'm like, I know it's not. You know, with me as DM, that'll never happen. <laughs> And morning wander, how was your morning? It's going good. I woke up. I had uh, crepes because my parents like making crepes uh, on weekends sometimes. Actually, fairly often. And uh, and then I'm here playing video games, playing interesting video games. I think uh, when it comes down to it, I don't quite like this as much as balloons, which I think is a bit of a downer. I wish that the the towers. You know what? I, I know it's probably too late for this kind of game, but I wish this uh, the towers actually had like a um, a Nova Drift upgrade system or like instead of uh, selecting upgrades in this manner, um, 
Wow, this is actually a really good spot. Um, instead of like picking overclock and high caliber and whatnot, I just level the tower ups, towers up, or they level up on their own. And every time they level up, I get a uh, pick of like three perks, and they would have like a, a twenty minutes till dawn or Nova Drift like little perk selection thing of like, hey, these are the perks that you uh, you can get. And, uh, and so you can kind of build each tower to do different things. Yeah, more fluid upgrade system. I, I think that's actually something uh, most tower defenses don't do, and I'm not sure why. Uh, going back to the, the topic of, you know, why tower defenses have become stale is because there's very little innovation. You know, even this one is, is just kind of an alternate to bloons. I think it's got some merits to it, and especially for, you know... What it is, it's charming, especially if you've played uh, a ton of balloons. Like, I, I would play more of this uh, mostly out of a desire to play more tower defense games. I think that's fine. I like the perk point system, but none of the perks really stood out as anything terribly fancy. Eruptor. Thermal explosions under enemies. Uh, dealing 90, 95 damage to enemies inside it. Missile launcher or a zap tracker. I like the zap tracker. We're just... We're just going to keep stacking electricity, I guess is the answer. I'm kind of wondering where an open world tower defense would go. Um, There is kind of one? There is there is actually kind of one. I don't know if it's any good. Um, but yeah, I, I really would like to play like an open world kind of tower. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm thinking, like, uh, give me a, a planet. Like, not a big one, but, like, a planet from um, uh, Planetary Annihilation. This thing has no range. That concerns me. I'm going to put it here just so we can figure out how it works. It looks like what it does is it just puts, like, a little zapper thing. Uh, let's see. Zap. Zaps two enemies at once. So this, this just hits whatever's first. Uh, let's actually have it be whatever has the most amount of health. Actually, no, this is a mis mistake. It definitely has to be first. I do like it, though. I think this is actually uh, probably one of the more interesting towers I've seen so far. But yeah, if I set it to whatever uh, whatever has the most amount of health, it just kind of bounces back and forth. And that's not good. But I could see like a bunch of these just hanging out and clearing whatever's in the front line. Because it's got infinite range like a sniper, but it does AoE. And attacks much faster. It do, it does hit cloaking, but it doesn't track cloaking. But I think that's fine. I've got other things that can do it. Is there a lowest health option? Might be a good cleanup. The main problem is I think it would be flying between them too much. I'm thinking of just a small horde of these sitting on whatever's first. Just to, just to cook them at any range. Maybe. But I also think more laser beamers are... Very much a, a solid solution here. Let's see. Have this be most health. Maybe it doesn't change trackers. I have no idea. It doesn't really matter. This looks interesting. It's a pretty decent, uh, if standard, tower defense. It's got some interesting ideas like perks uh, to spice things up a little bit. And then also uh, the towers have a decent number of upgrades you can grab. I thought when, uh, when you leveled up it was supposed to unlock more modules, but uh, maybe I misread that.
Oh, I should probably get at least one, uh, one or two proton snipers. Because we want to get a heal nullifier and a solidifier. But yeah, I, I think the one issue is I like the turret designs. They don't match the environment. And so it ends up kind of feeling like this weird alt balloons. Which I think is okay. But I think what have, what would have made this game sing better is if I actually could have controlled ma mazing myself. Instead of having these preset things. I Okay. This is rewriting the game too much, but honestly, I think what they should have done was done away with the preset levels and the star system and even the meta progression and instead had it be uh, Honestly more roguelike ish, you know, every run is is different Maybe you can kind of set your like initial portal amount or something like that um, But you're just set down in an empty field. You have the ability to put down amazing tiles Maybe you get X number of amazing tiles per uh, per round or something and then every couple of waves, you get a new tower and like a perk. And then you can also uh, level up or upgrade your tower somehow. And then they have their own perk system. So you can go like really wild with it. All right, we should give this an inf infinite range. There we go. Not that it matters as much seeing as we are on the easiest difficulty, but still. But like slightly more rogue tower-ish? Kind of, yeah. Because Rogue, Rogue Tower's biggest issue is all of their perks were boring and, and uninteresting. And you couldn't control how you mazed, really. Eh, I don't know. I I think the big issue is just this style of tower defense and this, like, basic way of handling it is very done to death. And so while it's fun, it's kind of more of like fun out of nostalgia than like specifically this one of folks like, whoa, it's a great tower defense game. Uh, let's see. I'm confused why there are high tech towers, robots and portals in the woods. Yup. And that's why I was bringing up like um, White Laboratory earlier as a tower defense game with like really solid um, a tower defense game with like a really solid aesthetic for what it is. But, I don't know. Otherwise, it's just okay, which is a shame, because I could see it being much better without too much effort, but that effort would still probably take a couple months to get it rolling. And, you know, you might... It might honestly be better to just make another one using a number of the pre-established mechanics. Uh, as kind of a base instead. Uh, ish? I don't know. I think the set paths could work. They leaned more into the interesting mechanics and ideas that they have. Yeah, it's true. I I think the problem is these these set paths are so bloonish that I just cannot help but feel I'm playing bloons, but not. I think that holds it back more than I think the developers want. Because when you're trying to be similar to one of the best tower defense games on the market, you really have to bring some kind of special A game in. And like the perks aren't even as exciting as the balloon perks, and that's a bit rough. Now give me like a ridiculous Path of Exile talent tree, or honestly, I'd even say, uh, Change very little, just make it so every five waves or something, you just get a weird perk. Like, all miniguns now have infinite range. Um, or, you know, double double minigun range. Or, um, you know, heavily reduce accuracy for all towers, but, or, you know, where applicable. But now they shoot, like, twice as fast or three times as fast. Or, or modular towers using the module system they could have had would have been cool. Yeah! Yeah, no, you know, get rid of all of these different towers. And, like, some of them actually do seem kind of interesting. Um, but get rid of all the the variety and just make it so, like, you have the tracker tower, the rapid or the, the basic shooter tower, the laser tower, and an AoE tower. And then have, like, modules that are mutually exclusive. Like, you can only pick one. And... 
and force players to kind of pick and choose, but then also give them enough options there so they can really make some interesting choices. What's the range on this? I think the minigun is a bit, bit longer range. Because I think one of the things the tower defense genre lacks the most is choice and control. And I feel like the first tower defense game that really gives players uh, sub substantive amounts of choice and control could really go a long way. I'm surprised these kinds of games don't have simple random modifiers tossed in based on a tracker. So let's say we'll roll random benefits and downsides the most used tower to force the player to mix it up a bit. Yeah, I realize like that might not be something some people enjoy, but boy, that would really change how I engage with this. If like every run was slightly different. The big problem I'm having is that, uh, let's see. You only have two choices here. Which tower you buy and where you place it. The upgrades are all just grab as many as you can. There's no real uh, thought in that outside of the order you grab them. Yeah. Whereas like balloons, for example, if you notice, m half of the balloons towers aren't strictly just about DPS. They serve different roles and counter different things. Uh, whereas like here you have your basic minigun tower that can be upgraded to shoot stealth and also flying. Whereas balloons like... Uh, what's a good example? Um, well, the wizard f that can reveal camo balloons. Or if you go fire, it can reveal camo and uh, strip like lead casing. Or the alchemist who profits off of stripping lead casing. And so there's very much like a, a question of like, okay, which do I pick? Which do I want to spec towards? And then the talent tree actively kind of encourages that. You know, if, if you're very... Sp uh, centered around one type of tower, you can do more about that. Yeah, Bloons Towers even have strange upgrade paths. We're picking all in one upgrade path leads to transformation. Mixing them can lead to secret transformations, etc. Yeah! I... I feel like there's ways that you could do it. Um, while keeping within this formula, but once again, the big issue is that balloons exist, and that is such a hard thing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Uh, so, I think the... <laughs> just a final thought on, like, why tower defense games feel kind of meh, is it's the Souls-like effect. Where Dark Souls exists, therefore all Souls-likes have to be incredible to compete. And if they're not, they're not even worth thinking about. Which is an issue. So, uh, do we just stop here? I think we do. Uh... I could, I guess I could keep going for another seven waves, but I feel like I'm just going to keep um, lightly picking this game apart in a way that might not be the most wholesome, which is a downer, but is what it is. So, otherwise, Polycore Defense is available on Steam. I think it's 10 bucks, which is a fine price for what it is. Uh, I think one's getting a little tough because balloons exist, but if you've played balloons to death and back again, uh, then maybe this is something that'll be a little bit different, uh, at least enough to keep you interested while waiting for like another patch or something else to come out. We will see. But for now at least, I guess let's move on to the next.